So lullaby for Radha. Oh Radha, do you hear the rustling of leaves in the twilight through which the breeze runs its fingers? It is a lullaby for you, O oh Swamini, to enter your dreams better, where Mohan is waiting for you, that when your eyes meet, you forget what is a dream and what is reality. O oh Radike, do you see the reddish lines on the vestas of the sky in the evening? How they change their colors? These games are only for your eyes, that gently melt the hearts of all those that happiness has sent to be near you. O oh, Lotus Eye, Tuan, do you see that silent encounter of day and night turning into magic? The first touch of your lips and that of Mohan is transformed into it. When the universe becomes silent and only the trembling of your words streams through the ether. O Adishwari, our queen, do you hear our hearts beating lively as we adorn you in meditation? These are just the sounds of your love to which only love can respond in the same way. Gorade, do you see the Irish flowers leaning on your windows? They offer you a scent and beauty whose color is like your eyes. Oh, beautiful, they would descend to your tender neck to adorn you and to adorn themselves with your sweetness. O Radike, the treasury of the beauty of all worlds. Everything that comes in contact with you becomes shine, becomes fragrance, becomes music. Everything is brought to life and turns into a smile. O Swamini, do you hear the voices of the gopis as they call you on the nights when the moon tints Yamuna with a golden color? And when the stardust near your head shines on the pillow? O Sakirade, they call, come, the king of dancers is waiting. Because when you appear, or Aseshwari, the grass becomes greener, the river clearer, and the moon brighter. Everything that breathes around you turns into one breath, flickers in the same rhythm, becomes one melody. And then only the whisper of your sweet name streams through the forest of Raj. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. You can continue. Sure, Thank you. So we will read from chapter 20. Sri Madhav Das Babaji. Sri Madhav Das Baba was born in 1851 in village Bargaria, situated near the confluence of rivers Mahananda and Padma in Bengal. He was only a child when his father died. <coughs> Therefore, his education remained incomplete. But he had learned only to read and write 
when he began to spend most of his time in the study of bhakti literature, kirtan and sadhu sangha, company of holy persons. At the age of 27, he renounced the world and went to Vrindavan. He took initiation from Sri Parmanand Prabhupada of Shingarvad and began to do bhajan. After some time, he obtained the Guru's permission to practice bhajan in some quiet and lonely place in Braj. He went to some, some Ketavat and began to live there with Sri Jagadananda Dasji, a disciple of Siddha Nityananda Das Baba of Vrindavan. Madhav Das Baba was very much benefited by the company of Jagadananda Das, who was an ideal sadhaka. Both of them went out separately for Madhukari in the evening, but sat down to eat together on their return. One day, Madhav Das Baba got some butter milk in Madhukari. As he sat down to eat, he said, it would be better if I add some salt to the butter milk. Let me go and beg for some salt. Jagadananda Das Baba cautioned, Madhav Das, don't yield to every temptation. Always beware of the mind. It is by nature restive. There is no end to its craving and demands. Today, it is asking for salt. Tomorrow, it will ask for molasses and then for sweets and what not. Your bhajan will be spoiled. Madhav Das abated by his advice. He learned to be content with whatever he got in Madhukari. Once there was a festival in some village. Madhav Das had gone there to participate in the feast. When he returned from there, Jagadananda asked, how far is that village from here? Four miles, replied Madhav Das. How many malpuas, which is a sweet puri, malpua, did you eat? Eight. How do you feel now? I'm feeling tired and drowsy. Then why live in a place from where you have to travel four miles for eating Malpua? Why not go and live in Vrindavan, where feasts and festivals are so frequent and one does not have to go far for eating Kachori and Malpua? Jagadananda Das Baba's reprimand had the desired effect. Madhav Das stopped going to feast. After some time, Jagadananda Das went to Barshana and began to live there on the bank of Bhanu Kunda. Madhav Das accompanied him. While living in Barsana, Madhav Das also got the opportunity of availing himself of the satsang, holy company, 
of Pandit Ram Krishna Das Baba and Sri Haricharan Das Babaji. From Barsana, Madhav Das went to Kamyavan. There he lived and practiced bhajan for a no number of years on the bank of Vimalkund, near the place where Siddha J. Krishna Das Baba used to do bhajan. Single-minded application to bhajan continued over a number of years, purified his mind. Subtle remnants of all worldly attachments and desires were eliminated. The only desire that remained was the desire for the darshan of Radha and Krishna. The desire became so strong that it was impossible for him to live without its fulfillment. One day, he actually thought of committing suicide. He said to himself, I have been doing bhajan for such a long time, but the two lords of my heart whose bhajan I have been doing have not appeared to me once, even in dream. Even Radha, who is by nature merciful, has not been kind to me. But, he said, the fault cannot be attributed to her. The fault must be mine. My heart is full of craftiness, and my bhajan has not been sincere. I do not really deserve to have her darshan. Then why should I carry the useless load of life? Why should I go for Madhukari and suffer unnecessary pain for keeping soul and body together. Let the body die. That day, he did not go for Madhukari. The fire of repentance and self-reproach was burning in his heart. He lay down and started weeping. Just then, a young Brahmin girl called at his door. Baba, oh Baba. He opened the door and saw the girl standing with a tali, tala, tali, a metallic dish in her hand, which was full of puri, kachori, kheer, and other delicious things to eat. She said, Baba, you did not go for Madhukari today. My mother has sent this to you. You must eat. Baba recognized the girl. Her arrival with food just at that time when he had decided not to go for Madhukari <coughs> and eat anymore made him think that it was a kind gesture from Radharani who had prompted the girl's mother to send the food to him. He felt reassured that sooner or later he would be blessed by her darshan. He accepted the food. Brajabasis regard anything offered by a sadhu out of his madhukari as sacred and eat it with relish. Therefore, Madhav Das Baba asked the girl to eat some of the good things she had brought. 
But she said, no, Baba. Today, a neighbor offered me some good things to eat, and I have eaten to my fill. I can't eat anymore. The girl went away. Baba sat down to eat. He was surprised by the unearthly odor and taste of everything he ate and by the sattvika bhavas it generated. He had taken Madhukari from the girl's house a number of times before, but never before he had that kind of experience. Also, he now began to think he had never before seen on the girl's face the kind of divine luster he saw when she came with the food, nor had he ever seen her looking at him so tenderly and talking to him so sweetly. Was it then the same girl, Radharani herself, who had kindly come in her guise, the thought sent a shiver in his body and brought tears in his eyes. Immediately, he set out for the home of the girl. The girl's mother was milking a cow in front of the house. She said, Baba, you are late today. Just wait a little. I shall give you Madhukari. Ma, have you not already sent me a tali full of puri, kachori, and kheer through your lali? What? Say the lady. Someone else must have sent those things. My daughter has not gone out since morning. No, ma. You can inquire from Lali. It was she who came and gave those things to me. Immediately, the lady called her daughter and said, Look, Lali, what is Baba saying? He says, you went to him a little while ago with a tali full of puri, kachari, and kheer. And the lady laughed. The girl also laughed and said, Baba, you must have seen a dream. Were you awake or asleep when you saw me handing over the tali to you? Baba was satisfied that it was Radharani who had played the trick but in order to conceal everything, he said, Yes, Lali, you're right. I must have seen a daydream. I do not know what has happened to me. And he returned to his cottage. Baba was happy that Radharani had at last given him darshan but he was sorry that she came under the guise of the Brahmin girl. He only cursed himself for this, for he thought he did not deserve to see her in a real form. It is said that Bhakti is the mother of humbleness. Madhav Das was so humble that he regarded himself as the lowest of the lowly and as untouchable by others. Therefore, he never accepted the invitation for a bandara or feast. But when there was a bandara in Sringarvat, his guru's place, he had to go. His guru knew 
that he would not sit to eat in the Pangat line of the Vaishnavas. Therefore, he let him sit down in the line of the low class people and the beggars, in spite of protests made by the Vaishnavas. Maravdas's humility and his devotion to the service of the Vaishnavas had entered him to all the Vaishnavas of Raja. They offered to make him the Mahant head of the ashram of Siddha Jai Krishna Das Baba of Kamyavan. He could not disregard the Vaishnavas. Therefore, he agreed to be the Mahant for a short time, after which he again began to wander freely in Braj. He lived longer in Vrindavan, sometimes in the Samadhi Sthan of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, sometimes in Lotan Kunja, and sometimes in Janu Mandal. While living in Janu Mandal, he once thought of the general belief that Sanatan Goswami, who was specially charged by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the responsibility of looking after the needs of the Vaishnavas, who renounced the word and went to live in Braj for Bhajan, even at that time, discharged irresponsibility towards them and did not let them go without food. He decided in order to test the belief not to go for Madhukari that day and to eat only if anyone offered anything to eat on his own. <coughs> After that, when he was passing along the Samadhi of Gopal Bhatta Goswami that day, he saw Mathura Das Baba, the Sevaka, servitor of the Samadhi, standing at the gate of the Samadhi as if he was waiting for him. On seeing him, he said, Baba, are you going for Madhukari? Don't go today. Come inside. Thakur's bhog is ready. I am suffering from fever. You kindly offer it to the Thakur and to Gopal Bhatta Goswami and eat. Maravdas did likewise. His heart was filled with gratitude towards Sanatan Goswami, whose mercifulness he thus realized fully. In 1892, Shri Radhikanath Goswami arrived in Vrindavan. Maravdas was drawn towards him on account of his soul inspiring Harikatha discourses on Sri Hari. Radhikanath Goswami was drawn towards Madhav Das on account of his Bhav Bhakti and his capacity to understand and enjoy the delicacies of Rasa. They came closer and closer until it became impossible for them to live without each other. Every day, both sat together and talked for hours of Krishna and Krishna Lila, losing consciousness of time and place, hunger and sleep. In 1894, Raja Rishi Banamali Raya Badura, the Jamidar of Tanas, came to Vrindavan. He was drawn towards both Radhikanath Goswami 
in Madhav Das and joined their company. He had a palatial building in Radakun where he lived for some time, but he built another in Vrindavan, which is now known as Tanas Mandir. He began to live in this building so that he might always have the company of Madhav Das Babaji. Sri Krishnananda, a samnyasi of Shankar Sampradaya, was so much influenced by Madhav Das Baba that he began to regard him as his guru. On his advice, he took Diksha from Prangopal Goswami and became a prominent Vaishnava of Chaitanya Sampradaya, who had a very large following. For about 18 or 19 years, towards the end of his life, Madhav Das Baba lived in Gopal Chandidar's ashram in Gopinath Bhag. During this period, Path, Kirtan, and Vaishnav Seva were regular features of the ashram. Sri Raghunandan Prashad Sina, the Raja of Munger. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My God. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Amazing. Sri Raghunandan Prashad Singh, which is the good, uh, grandfather of Gurudev. Is it a coincidence? Sri Raghunandan Prashad Singh, the Ra Gurudev is there now. Uh, the Raj of Munger used to finance most of these activities. Once, Madhav Das said to the Raja, when I die, the Vaishnavas will approach you for donation in connection with an Utsav, celebration with feast. On that occasion, no, so it's a writing mistake. No. On that occasion, do not give them anything. <laughs> give me as much as you can at present so that I can spend more on path and kirtan. The Raja started giving donations more freely. In 1933, Madhav Das Baba left the body to enter the transcendental Vrindavan in the midst of kirtan performed by the famous Kirtaniya Sri Ganesh and his party, that in the presence of Prangopal Goswami and other prominent Vaishnavas. Sri Madhavdas Babaji Ki. You know, Maraj, would you like to show something? No, it's so nice. <laughs> he was born in 1891? No, 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 before. Oh, 1851. 50. 1851. 1851. Oh. His life was more than 80 years. Anyone has any sharing or maybe any question that can make a sharing or uh, I, I don't know, maybe you can share. What about Vira Hotsa? He will get nothing like this. Sorry? 
Vira Hautsa. Vira Hautsa. Because I came from Gaudimax. They uh, celebrated every visitor's day, every Vajinawa uh, in the line. What's about here? I don't know anything. Because this Madhava does, Madhava Babaji. Yeah. Ragnar Prasad Singh, don't give money. Means, no, I don't want to celebrate it. Here, yeah, what is it possible? How it's happening here? Because I don't remember what we have celebrated something like this. It means no such tradition. No, we do. Like when is the disappearance of Radha from Gurudev or Gurudev uh, grandfather, Gurudev father? Uh -huh. We are doing this something. disappearance. Okay. Yeah. In May is a uh, Param Gurudev disappearance day. Then there is Gurudev father, Gurudev grandfather. Always we do. Mm -hmm. You were not here for Pram Guru hmm? disappearance? In May, I was in Russia. Okay. And I came in the day of the appearance of disappearance of Shri uh, Arman Prasad Okay. Okay, so we mm. we continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sri Jagannath Das Babaji. There lived in Barshana on the bank of Bhanukunda a Babaji who left Vardamana, his native place, at an early age and came to Barsana to live here and meditate in the hope that he would be blessed with the darshan of Radharani. His name was Jagannath Das Babaji. Baba lived only on a few pieces of bread he got in Madhukari, but one could see in his cottage a number of earthen pots which contained rice, wheat, pulses, and other food grains, and a number of small bags which contained amalaki, amblic, marbalan, mar marbalan, hara, marbalan, bahera, and other medicines. These were meant not for him, but for the sadhus and brajavasis who came to him when in need. He also cooked for them at times. Once Barsana was plagued by a severe famine. Famine? Famine. Prayers and cries for mercy rented the sky of Barsana. Baba hesitated in going to the Brajavasis for Madhukari. He could not consume the foodstuffs he had stored for the sadhus. He had now to give it all away to them because they were the people worst affected by the famine. He could not go elsewhere because the moment he thought of leaving Barsana, his heart began to sink and tears began to flow from his eyes. He did not know what to do. He passed day after day without a morsel of food. But ultimately, he had to decide to leave Barsana. As he was leaving Barsana with bag and baggage, a young Brajabasi girl, whom he knew, came and asked, Baba, where are you going? 
Somewhere, Baba said, with tears in his eyes. But why? Why? There is dearth of Madukari here in your village. How can I live without Madukari? What do you say, Baba? Dirt for you? My mother keeps Madukari for you every day. Why don't you come? Even today, she has kept Madukari for you in the kitchen. Go and take it and do not go away from here. Baba was very angry. He thought since the girl's mother had already kept Madukari for him, it would be better to eat before going out. He went back to his cottage, kept the luggage there, and then went to the girl's house. As soon as the girl's father saw Baba, he said, Baba, you have come very late. There is no Madukari now. Why did you, did, didn't you come earlier? But I have come on the invitation of your Lali, who told me that her mother had kept Madukari for me in the kitchen. My Lali, say the Brajabasi, amazedly, she's not here. She went to her father-in-law's long ago. You must have mistaken some other girl for my Lali. No, no, it was she, I am sure. The Brajabasi smiled, but he turned to his wife and said, See if there is something in the kitchen you can give to Baba to eat. He must be hungry. His wife went to the kitchen. As soon as she opened the door of the kitchen, she shouted, Oh my God, how wonderful! Who kept this tally full of rotis, dal, rice, and vegetables here? I didn't. The Brajavasi was stupefied. But suddenly, the thought flashed in his mind. It must have been Radharani herself who went to invite Baba in the guise of my lali and who kept the tali in my kitchen for Baba. Who else could be? Baba also thought the same. He was so overwhelmed with Bhav that tears streamed out of his eyes and his heart burned with an intense feeling of gratitude towards Radharani, drawn deep into the ocean of her mercy. The Brajabasi's wife gave to Baba everything Radharani had placed for him in the tali. Baba used to accept only pieces of bread in Madukari. But this time he accepted rice, dal, and the other things as well, because the Madukari was from Radharani. As Baba took leave of the Brajavasi, both the Brajavasis and his wife said, Baba, do come every day for Madukari. Baba was reminded of Sri Krishna's assertion in Gita that he himself took care of his devotees and the story of the Brahmana devotee who doubted its veracity. The story goes like this. There lived in Jagannath Puri a virtuous Brahman pandit with his wife. He lived on alms, but he was very devout. He loved Gita 
and used to pass all his time in reading and meditating on its verses. Once he was meditating on the following sloka. Those who are exclusively devoted to me and always think of me and nothing else, I myself own the responsibility of fulfilling all their wants, including the want of emancipation or the attainment of my feet and protecting them from all ills. He thought the word vaham, uh, vahamyam, which mean, I myself carry the burden of fulfilling their wants, was inappropriate. It should have been karomyaham, which meant, I arrange for the fulfillment of their wants or get them fulfilled through others. Why should Krishna, who was the controller and governor of the universe and whose commands are obeyed by Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu and all other gods and goddesses, himself carry any burden on his head? So he scored the word Vahamyaham and wrote Karomyaham. One day it rained so heavily that the Brahmana could not go out for alms. He and his wife both had to go without food. He went out the next day when the rain stopped. Not long after he had gone out, a very handsome boy who was carrying provisions on his head and whose forehead was bleeding on account of a scratch, came in and said to his wife, Ma, Panditji has sent this prashad. Pandit's wife was charmed to see the boy's lovely face and hear his sweet voice, but was pained, pained at the sight of blood dropping from his forehead. She said, my child, who has hurt you? Panditji, replied the boy. Panditji, which Panditji? Your husband. My husband is so simple and kind-hearted. Why should he hurt a lovely boy like you? I tell you the truth, Ma. It was your husband who pierced my forehead with the point of a dart. But why? He alone knows why. The boy kept the load of provisions before the lady and disappeared. She was aghast to see him disappear before her very eyes. When the Brahman returned, his wife narrated the story to him in words, betraying at once astonishment, grief, and resentment. The poor Brahman was dumbfounded. There was no end to his grief and repentance. For it did not take him long to understand who that lovely boy was. The thought dawned upon him that Gita was a verbal image of Krishna. And by scoring through one of its words with his pen, he had actually pierced the body of Krishna. Also by himself, Bringing the provisions to his house, he had proved the literal, uh, literality of the truth that he himself carried the burden of the responsibility of fulfillment of the wants of his devotees. The Brahmana 
was so full of remorse on account of his guilt that he fell senseless on the ground. As Jagannath Das Baba thought of this story, he said to himself, If Krishna can be so merciful to his devotees, how can Radharani lag behind? She is even more merciful. The author of Gaudiya Vaishnav Jivan wrote about 50 years ago that even at that time, by the grace of Radharani, Banakandi, the descendant of the Brajavasi family who used to give Madhukari to Baba, was the happiest and the wealthiest man of Barshana. Shri Jagannath Das Baba Ji Ki Mm -hmm. Explain us something. Eh? Mm -hmm. Explain us something. <laughs> so, this story was very famous. Mm -hmm. It is uh, 922. So, this was mentioned. Krishna, someone who devoted to Krishna, and always think of Krishna, Whatever devotee needs, Krishna will be bring. Whatever devotee has, Krishna will protect. That is the meaning. So sometimes devotee may think, is this true or not? Especially someone who is very poor. I also, I also experienced this thing, you know. And anyway, so this story was also Nara Maharaj used to used to narrate this story. Actually, this Krishna Balaram came. Mm. <laughs> Two boy came. Okay. Yeah, carries all the vegetables and rice dal and all. You know. And then that Brahman so poor. Even this ma Mataji only has one 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 sari. And uh, you know, and uh, she was kind of uh, the kind ma come, you know, there kind of ma and uh, so please open door and who 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 are you? Oh Guruji send us to you. Guruji, you know, and then, then she opened door, and she was surprised. So beautiful, blackish and white boys standing and with carrying, and also some kind of you know, some kind of one say, kind of scratch there. And then, like she's asking, and then she said, "Lari, eh, like Lara, please wait." I cook for you. Nice food. Because, you know, they are so poor. Nothing to cook, actually. But they, and, you know, and then she was cooking. At that time, that Brahman was going to Madhukari. But at that day, he could not do anything. And then, meanwhile, Prasada is ready. So that ma called the boy. Hey boy, Prasad ready. Please come. And she op she, you know. But the boy disappeared. And then meanwhile, that husband, Guruji, came. Then Guruji said, Oh, today my mother is nothing. It's very, very rare. I could not get anything. 
I'm very sorry. Now today we don't have anything to eat. This Guruji said. Then why are you in then then kind of you know wife came. What they talking about? Just you know before two boys carrying a lot of boga, rice, dal, and vegetable, so on. Now I made prasada, and I try to feed them, but disappear. And then he start wondering and asking, "Can you tell me what's the what's the color of boy? What's the age?" Yeah, they are like kind of 10, 11 years boy, white, black, and white. But uh, their face, some kind of, you know, kind of scratch, some kind of two lines scratch. And then he start realizing and crying, you know. What I'm doing? Why I doubt Krishna's word? Then crying, crying like this. So this story give us strong faith. Because sometimes we are, we are thinking, you know, yeah, this Bhagavad Gita just, you know, 5,000 years old, you know, sometimes Krishna does not give me something like this. I personally experience. So, when I got married, I saw poor. And I was very sick at that time. I was three months a year, I was lying down at that time. Mm. Since, you know, at that time, I have to pay a rent, say, a month, like, uh, say, like uh, 700 US dollars or 800 US dollars, maybe 700 now. So I was worrying, you know, if I could not pay my rent, then I have to go out. Then my wife, Karabati, went out this kind of, you know, book distribution kind of madukati, you know. <laughs> but uh, she does, but not so much, you know. Mm. So, and I was lying down on the bed, you know. I cannot do anything. So I was wandering, oh my God. For oh, this month, I may, you know, we cannot pay rent. Then if two months continue, we have to get out. Then we don't know where to go. So then, amazingly, one day, one letter come with money. I heard you got married. I I did not send you money. So sorry, it become very late. <laughs> I will send you 200 US dollars, 300 US dollars. And this after after marriage, a few years later. I was completely amazed. Is this not one time? A few times. Then at that time, I realized, you know, oh my God, Krishna is protecting. Actually, I have that realization, <laughs> but when I was Brahmachari, before marriage, so I used to travel. Before marriage, my Guru Dev said, oh, you can, you can go to bring up, uh, you know, India, cool your head. <laughs> so I was traveling with, with very less money. And then one day I got injured my leg. At that time, I think daddy, I was staying dead. And then I, I was staying, at that time I was, I went to daddy temple. Then asking devotee, or oh, I got to injure my leg. So what to do? Then at that time I have really less money. And then devotee said, go to hospital, you know, you go to doctor. 
Yeah, true. But uh, my problem is I have no money, less money. So what to do? Well, okay, I have doctor. I know one doctor. I can bring you to that doctor. At that time, I, I have to go to little operation, small operation. Then I went to see the doctor and that devotee who does not know me. First time meeting. Oh, this comes from Japan. His brahmachari, you know, she got to, you know, injured, you know. Hey, doctor, can you help? Help him. Yes, he needs some little, little small operation. But you know, I said, but doctor, I'm sorry. I'm like a brahmacharya, I'm monk. I have no money with me. So what to do? Don't worry. I pay for you. Doctors told me like this. And then he did small operation, that kind of, you know, this cutting kind of. And then I was completely amazed. And also, and that day, again, I went to go to airport. Then I realized I don't have any money to pay tax. At that time, uh, 90s, at that time, we have to pay airport tax. And also, I don't have money to, to pay taxi also to go to airport. Then again, problem come. Then again, asking, oh my God, you know, now I am really without money. What to do? I don't have any money to pay taxi and tax. And then one devotee said, you know, taxi, that devotee is going the same day. You can, you can go with him. And airport tax, I can pay for you. So kind of these things happening. So I also experienced, you know, I was traveling, you know, many places at that time, many times like this. So then I realized, oh, actually this 9.22 bus. I know theoretically, but I experienced the real one. Then slowly, slowly, I, my confidence, my faith is slowly, slowly strong. Whenever I go, whenever I stay, whenever my situation, money situation, or, you know, like family situation, so Krishna will help help me. Actually, Radhika, Radhika does now, now I feel. So sorry. So this, this story is very famous. Narayan Maharaj used to, used to say, and also personally, I also experience. I have, this is 100% I have faith. So I'm sorry. <laughs> It's very nice to Thank you. Yeah. Sri Pran Krishna Das Babaji. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Prime Krishna Das Baba was born in 1802 in village Bangnapan of Vardhamam district of West Bengal. He took initiation from Yadunandan Prabhu of Banyapan, Banyapana, Agaswami in the Parampara disciplic succession of Ma Janava, but practiced bhajan for a very, uh, for a long time under the guidance of Siddha Bhagavan Das Baba of Kalna. Thereafter, he went to Vrindavan 
and began to live in Kalida near the Kuti of Siddha Sri Jagadish Das Baba. He had carefully read the sloka 9, 12, 1, 2, 9th canto, 12th chapter, 1st, 2nd sloka of Srimad Bhagavatam, in which Sri Krishna says to Uddhav, O Uddhav, Yoga, Gyan, Dharma, study of the Vedas, austerities, renunciation, sacrifices, works of public utility, such as the excavation of well, tanks, etc., fasts, pilgrimages, self-restraint, and observance of religious rules, all these cannot captivate me. But I'm easily captivated through satsang, association of holy persons, which uproots all worldly attachments. He was convinced of the importance and the utter necessity of satsang. He knew that the Lord could be attained only through prema or love for the Lord. And love for the Lord can be attained only by the grace of Mahapurusha, who has attained the grace of the Lord. There is a verse of Narad Bhakti Sutra, but without translation. I don't know if you understand, Jananda. I don't understand, but uh, this, it seems the same, same one. Only Bhakti, Prema can attain the, the mercy of uh, kind of like, uh, like Bhagavad, Mahaprabhu. Bhagavad, great personality. Yeah, great personality. He, therefore, adopted the service of the Mahapurushas as the primary means for the attainment of divine love. Fortunately for him, there lived close to Iskuti in Kalidaha two great saints who had attained the grace of the Lord, Sri Jagadis Das Baba and Sri Dayal Das Baba. He began to serve them with all his heart and soul. Both of these Mahatmas usually remained absorbed in the Divine Lila, mostly without consciousness of the body and its needs. Brahm Krishna Das Baba carefully looked after them. He cooked for them and sometimes even fed them with his own hand. He messaged their body, rendered all kinds of menial service to them. Besides, in their changing moods, he served them by singing songs according to their bhava. Through the service of these saints who were Siddha, accomplished in Manasiseva, service through contemplation of Radha Krishna, he also became Siddha in Manasiseva. In Manasiseva, he had adopted sweeping of the Nikunja, the transcendental grove of retreat or retreat of Radha Krishna as his main service. While engaged in this service, he outwardly appeared as sweeping Kalidaha, but inwardly, that is, in his Siddhadeya, that is, in his spiritual body, as a gopi of Raj, he swept the Nikunja. In his Siddhadeya, he was not only an observer, but also a participant in the Leela of Radha Krishna. Sri Rupa Madhuriji, a Siddha saint, 
of Shuka Sampradaya, who was a contemporary of Pran Krishna Das Baba, wrote a poem in Braja Basha in his praise, in which he said, Baba is 104 years old. He has made Radha Krishna captivate, captive sorry, in his heart. His words are extraordinarily sweet and exhilarating. The reason why his words were so sweet and exhilarating was that they were outpourings of a heart in which dwelt Radha and Krishna, the twin embodiments of transcendental sweetness and bliss. Radha and Krishna were drawn to him because they were fond of listening to talks about themselves. And Prime Krishna Das always thought and talked about them and did nothing else. Srimad Bhagavatam says, those who always narrate or listen Krishna Kata with faith in their hearts, Sri Bhagavan enters soon. Prankrishna Baba was not learned. He could hardly read or write. Yet he had learned Krishna Das Kaviraj Govinda Lila Mrita, describing the Astakalya Lila of Krishna by heart. He meditated on Krishna Lila as described in that book. He had become so old meditating and talking always of Krishna Lila. Yet his eagerness to think and talk of it, instead of decreasing, had gone on increasing day by day. He did not simply think or talk about the Lila, but saw it and seeing it, he sometimes laughed and sometimes wept. Even at night, when he was supposed to be sleeping inside his kuti, he was drawn in Lila and could be heard sometimes laughing, sometimes weeping, and sometimes talking. When the cup of his heart got overfilled with the nectar of Krishna Lila, he became eager to share it with someone else by talking to him about it. If he did not find anyone to listen to him, he would, in his impetuosity, go out and sit on the Parikram Mark, the path of circumvallation of Vrindavan by the side of beggars. While the beggars persisted in their request to the pilgrims on circumvallation, to give them something, Baba persisted in his request to take something from them. He offered them prashad. They could not refuse to take prashad. When they came near and extended their hand for prashad, he looked at them courteously with eyes brimming with tears and said prayerfully, would you listen to Krishna Katha? Krishna Katha is very sweet. The manner in which he implored was so courteous and persuasive that even if they did not have any interest in Krishna Katha, they could not say no. In this, he described the Krishna Lila to them in such fascinating way that the seed of devotion to Krishna got firmly implanted in their hearts. It is said that in a devotee who has realized Krishna, all noble qualities like humility, kindness, forbearance, and non-attachment exist in their ideal form. 
In the case of Jagadish Das Baba and Pran Krishna Das Baba, this can be beautifully illustrated by means of an episode which relates to them both. People who came to Jagadish Das Baba usually made some offerings to him, but he did not even touch them. He had asked Pran Krishna Das Baba to collect and keep them aside for the service of Thakur and the Vaishnavas. Once a visitor offered him 10 rupees along with a lota, small water pot, and a balati bucket. Pran Krishna Baba collected them. A greedy Jatadari Babaji, Babaji with method air, who lived nearby, say to Jagadish Das Baba, give them to me. Jagadish Das Baba readily, readily promised to give. He thought he would ask Pran Krishna Das to give them to him, but he forgot. The Jatadari Baba got angry. After two or three days, he threw a brick bat towards Jagadish Das Baba. He did not hit him, but it, it reminded him of his promise. Immediately, he called Prankrishna Das and said, I have committed an offense against the Jatadari Baba. I promised to give him the Lota Balati and the money that visitor had offered, but I forgot. He has kindly reminded me of it by throwing a brick bat at me. We should give those things to him. Yes, we must, said Pran Krishna Das Babaji. We should also request him to take everything that is offered to us, considering it as his own. If he agrees, we should feel very grateful to him, because he would thus keep Maya away from us. Jagadish Das Baba was very happy to hear this. The next day, he invited the Babaji to his kuti for prasad. He came. After greetings and obeisance, he was made to sit for prasad. He was served sandesh, rasgullas, robbery, and other delicacies. While Jagadish Das Baba served him nicely, Prankrishna Das Baba fanned him with a palm leaf fan in his hand. During the course of service, Jagadish Das Baba said, Maharaj, I beg to be excused for forgetting to send you the promised Lota Balati and the money. I should have sent them the same day. But do you know how forgetful and negligent I am in my behavior? As he said this, Prince Krishna brought the top Lota Balati and the money and placed them before the Babaji. Jagadish Das Baba added with folded hands, Maharaj, I have one more request. You know that although we are both old, we are like your children, and you are like our father. We are living here and doing bhajan under your kind protection. We are so weak and imbecile that we may yield to temptation and come under the clutches of Maya any moment. You are so powerful that Maya cannot even touch you. You can hold Maya captive in your kamandalu, an earthen or wooden water pot used by ascetics. So kindly keep your kamandalu here. The visitors will put their offerings in it. You kindly lift it every evening. Thus, you will help us keep Maya at a distance. 
The Babaji kept on listening. He bent his head with shame. The fire of repentance began to burn in his heart. He could reply only by shedding tears. He went back to his kuti, leaving the low tabalati and the money behind. He could not sleep that night. From the next day, he became not only the true protector, but also the true servant of Jagadish Das Baba and Pran Krishna Das Baba. Pran Krishna Das Baba was 104 years old when Rup Maduriji wrote the aforesaid poem about him. Even at that time, he was full of energy and there was power and attraction in his speech. But he lived and continued to inspire and guide people in Raganuga Bhajan for 32 more years. He left the body in 1938 at the age of 136. His samadhi exists near the samadhi of Jagadish Das Baba in Kalidaha. Sri Brankrishna Das Baba Ji Ki. This is really amazing. We should see this, huh? Hmm? This samadhi. It would be nice I'm to done. see. Kalidaha hey, is where. Uh, I know. This thing. Yeah. I don't remember so much because you know, And this also interesting. This this book say they are sweeping in the Nikunja. Gopi Gopi sweeping Nikunja. Mm. Like I say, two two hundred one, you know, thirteen page. Mm. So this, um, Purana Krishna, G maybe. So he's so. While engaging his service, he outwardly appeared as sweeping Kariya de Daha. But inwardly, that is in the Siddha Deha, that is in his spiritual body as a gopi of Braja, he swept the Nikunja. But this gopi is, I think this is Manjari. Manjari, yeah. Manjari. The Manjari are gopis, group yeah, of gopis. Yeah, so therefore sometimes, you know, uh, lighter lighting like a gopi sometimes mm. saki babupa also na? same thing mm. and also this behavior i just <laughs> kind of remember guru dev no? this is this is oh my god this also this which baba uh rota jadadari no, no jadabari baba jadadari jadadari means uh, naked, naked uh, like Rasta air, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreadlocks. And Jatabari Baba also great, you know, just listening and uh, he could realize, you know, what they meant, you know. Mm. <laughs> this is very interesting, you know. You are so powerful that Maya cannot even touch you. You can hold Maya captive in your commander. So kindly keep your commander here. The visitors will put the offering in it. You kindly lift it every evening. Thus you will help us keep Maya at the distance. This is very amazing word. <coughs> because they're so humble and they don't want to touch any money. And uh, even some, see, this, uh, what is it, Jata, Jata? Jata Dari. Jata Dari Baba want to have that money because yeah. greedy. But he listen this uh, Pranakri Jagadesha Baba 
the word, then he realized. This is also Sadhu's Mahabani's power. Babaji, the Babaji kept on listening. He bent his head with shame. The fire of repentance began to burn in his heart. He could reply only by shedding tears. He went back to his kuti, leaving the lota barati and the money behind. And then he could not sleep that night. From the next day, he became not only true protector, but also the true servant of Jagadisha Das Baba and the Puri Prana Krishna Das Baba. This Baba also great personality. I think the, that association of Jagadisha Das Baba and Prana Krishna Das Baba, he also purified. Yeah, he made him realize which was his attachment mm. and blessing him at the same time. Mm. So he, by saying that he removed actually, he made him aware of uh, his attachment and gave him the, the power to, to, to remove that, to become detached from that. That, so I did say only by Kripa, before he was saying from Krishna Das Baba, choose and decided only to uh, do service to Mahapurusha, to great personality, instead of trying to do so many austerities, pilgrimages, and everything. Because they can decrease the word attachments, like Jatadari Baba was a renunciant, was a Varagi, he was also Sauron Baba, and he had nothing. So he was not thinking of building or buying many, many, many things, but still he had the greed of attachment to money. And he was even attached for one rupee, which they offered to Jagadish Das Baba. So according to what is your circumstances you desire, like if you have big money, you will desire <laughs> big things. <laughs> even if you're a renunciant, might do many austerities, uh, whatever, but still if the desire is their attachment, then I will think, oh, I don't desire because you will desire small things, but still desire is there. But it got removed just by the mercy of Jagadish Das Baba. Although this Jatadadari Baba probably was uh, doing so much sadhana and austerities, only by the mercy of the sadhu, he got, could got freed from the uh, attachment from the last that he had still towards certain things. Usually, if say, if material person, if say, someone who is, you know, please give me like this, <coughs> then we have maybe a little angry, or maybe some kind of feeling, some kind of, let's say, like a little bit uh, enmity or some, you know, disguise. But this Baba is so, so pure, no false ego, just glorify Baba. You know, like a guru, they were also glorifying, you know, some sadhu came. Oh, you give me, you are so kind, you give me mercy, you know, and then please sit chair. <laughs> so, and this is Baba's behavior. We, we could understand how they are humble. And uh, we need this Mahat Kripa. Mahapurusha's company. Yeah, Kuripa and the company. company. Then attain the grace of the Lord. Actually, especially Raghunaga Bhakti's essence, Raghunaga Bhakti's essence, I think this word, we need Kuripa. And we need Sajati Sangha. I think that is, a, I think this book show us yeah. the kind of what secret, is the secret. The main things to focus. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Then also this book give us some inspiration and hope. So one day, sometime one day we may also uh, get mercy and get darshan. Oh, 
Kings. Brother, Ada, anyone likes to share something? Can you make this picture? Yes. Where everyone is like, you can see everyone. How many? I was so much touched by it during all reading two episodes, like she, when Srimati Radhika came to Vaishnava. 35. 35. 35. Yeah. yeah. I was so much touched by two episodes, emotionally touched by two episodes during all reading today. Then Srimati Radhika came to take care about her devotee. Why? Because if devotee wants to more surrender to Shimati Radhika, he needs to uh, see in his beloved um, Ishtadevata the, how she is love him. He needs to increase his faith. Means a natural attachment, natural relationship. And these two episodes for me are very significant. Mm -hmm. And also, this episode appears as a religion. I think one is two is Barishana. One Barishana. One Barishana, and one is maybe another Buraja. So, outside Buraja, it is uh, maybe difficult. Mm -hmm. But uh, is Buraja, this is Radharan, is. Uh, Kingdom mm -hmm. and Radha Rani's mercy is always there. So they all who Guru Devas encourage us to, to stay Brindavan or, or visit Brindavan because we may feel Buraja mood, Buraja's feeling. Also, Srimati Radhika's mercy if we are very fortunate enough to, to, to have eye to see. Actually, every moment. So this is Buraja, this is Saint Buraja. So this is glorify Saint in Buraja. Also, same time, glorify the Buraja, the glory. How Buraja is powerful. How, how Sadhu in Buraja is surrendered. How Sadhu is slowly, slowly purify, get rid of this anarta and attachment and false ego. This is very encouraging for us also. Um, to, from some uh, point of view, to desire to receive Shemati Radhika's mercy in this way, when she is caring personally, it's uh, not what uh, Shilarupa Goswami is teaching or Acharyas. They want to serve, not receive service from Shemati Radhika. <laughs> but, but in the beginning, uh, it's like in childhood, uh, of course, the child wants to receive it's uh, this love. Uh, is this necessary for a child? If my spiritual life, like age of child, like Shogurdev here, I remember how he explained to us about beauty of Srimati Radhika. But in which way he present us her beauty? He present in Vatsalya Bhava, when we are a child, she's our mother, <laughs> in this way. <laughs> if he is present to me this way, this means it's my age, spiritual age. <laughs> It means in my growing, I am a small child. In this way, I can understand it's natural for me to be attracted oh. for this type of uh, episodes, <laughs> this type of leos. Also because one Baba, Madhava Baba, he had desire to receive darshan from Srimati Radhika, and she came, it's also my desire. And she came in this way to care about him and at the same time fulfill his desire to receive darshan. Rather. Actually, very good point. Devotee does not want to service of Radha. 
we said that we want to serve Radha, but that uh, you know we are so new fight. You know we need some some. We want to see you know darshan. We also we need to you know we need a care. That's also true. Uh, Guru Dev told. I remember also he told. To increase our relationship with Shimati Radhika and to increase our niche to her, we need to receive anuraga from her. When they are giving our efforts, in one day, we must receive this, her anuraga. It will be so surprised. It will be beyond, so far beyond of our expectation, he told. Then it will give us so strong impression in heart and feelings towards her. Also, we could see this story. You, you know, the desire better find. Okay, I go. I go. To, I live yeah. for for yeah, for for Parishane. So I have no hope. Then he becomes so humble enough. Then mercy come. And this is the beauty of bhakti. Nade.